I'm 79 now and Chris is 62. So the issues that I have with age difference are mainly related to my physical well-being. You know, as you get older, things don't work as efficiently as they used to. And my concern is that that Chris is going to become burdened if I become not able to function physically or mentally. (laughs) But on the other hand, in many ways, Chris keeps me young. You know, I would never be going to rock shows and getting home at two or three in the morning if it, if it weren't for Chris. So uh, in many ways, he keeps me moving, keeps me doing things. So that's really my main concern about the, the age difference. Mentally, emotionally, I haven't really noticed that uh, it's been an issue at all. When I first met Buck, I was thinking I need to stop the tricking because I'd been tricking with guys and most of them were older than me because that's kind of what I'm attracted to physically. But I knew that, well, maybe it'd be better if I, for a relationship, if I was with somebody closer to my age. And between the time that I first went on the first date with Buck and then came back and saw him again, I did actually date a few people that were my age and it was, they were disasters, not prepared for the future. Like I just couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. It just felt like these people are, I, I'm going to be, ter- I'm going to be taking care of them. I might as well take care of somebody who can take care of himself. And because we met online, there was nobody else who could vouch for him. So when I saw him again a year later with a friend in tow, there were now people that I knew who could say, oh, Buck, oh, I I know who he is. So that's sort of one of the problems about meeting somebody online is you don't know what you're getting at all. You have no idea what you're getting. You get what they tell you and you don't know whether that's true or not. So that was part of the deal, you know, um, at first also was... There's nobody I know that knows you, so I'm I'm just going to put you over here for a minute. But like I say, I've dated a few people that were more my age, and it was not going to work out. So at the time that we got reconnected, I had just sort of like, maybe I'm going back to what I like. <laughs> Isn't that interesting how, how just one little fluke of time can change your life? If Mark hadn't brought you to that meeting, we probably wouldn't have gotten together again. It's yeah, like, sure. you know, if I hadn't missed that red light, I would have been 30 seconds ahead of there and this wouldn't have happened. You know what I mean? And, you know, uh, the issues that I had with other people being older were also control issues. So there was a lot of like guys that I'd meet that were older that wanted to, you know, they wanted me to be a certain thing or a certain way or, um, and I'm like, no, I just like older guys. Stop trying to control me. And um, now I think I let you control certain things. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, as a dive instructor, <laughs> you have to be in complete control when you're underwater. And so I was kind of in the habit of being in control, and I've been alone for so many years, I was used to controlling my own my own life. And I don't know whether or not Chris will agree with this or believe me, but I, I've let a, let go of a lot of my control issues oh, way. since we've been together. Way. And so we have a lot of uh, sort of mutual consent stuff going on in our lives. I think we both have some control issues. Oh, for sure. But I've let go of a lot of that from my my viewpoint, and I think Chris has too. Well, again, I think it goes back to what's the goal? What is the control trying to do? Is it just to satisfy a need that you need to be in control? Or is there a danger issue I don't know about? Or is there, you know, like, I'll do this because you don't know what's happening. You don't see that this is happening. And But most of it, we've got all that worked out living together. We don't have any of those anymore. Right. As we are getting older, we have certain things that we're planning for. And there's other stuff that we can look to our families to see, oh, yeah, well, there's some of that going on. So that's a possibility like Alzheimer's, 
you know, like there's a person in your family that's experiencing that right now, but your parents died before they reached that age. So it's possible you could have some of that as well. And that's partly why we bought this house, because there's fewer traps, if you will, and he'll be comfortable here. You'll never have to move again. That was my promise. You'll never have to move again. And that was my vow. Yes. Never moving again. Yes. My parents both died with also with dementia issues, financial issues. I mentioned they both died penniless. And so I'm I'm really more cognizant of that, especially with my job and making sure I've got enough money to retire on. Um, and as far as, you know, what's going to happen to me, I watched my dad get prostate cancer. I've had prostate cancer. He had dementia. I'm probably going to have dementia. You know, I want to make sure I don't have to be a burden on somebody else. Certainly not any of my nieces and nephews. I've had a lot of um, family members who have died very young, uh, mostly from colon cancer. My dad died of a heart attack very suddenly. Uh, my mom went through illnesses. It was a long protracted, but she was in a position where she could afford to have somebody live in uh, and take care of her for her for her final years. Now, all of our family, we would take uh, shifts and driving her to dialysis and, you know, doing stuff for her. So she had us as a support system, but she could afford to have somebody professional take care of her in her, in her final years. You know, it doesn't really matter what's happened before us. There are no, there are no guarantees and you can't forecast what's going to happen. And my issue is I don't want Chris to have to be burdened because I can't take care of myself. So I would want the same thing if it ever came to that. And again, that goes back to the way our relationship is, where we take care of each other. I don't want him to have to, to, have to look after me when I can no longer look after myself. So when that time comes, I'll look at, at other we'll deal with ways of dealing with there. it. Yeah. yeah.